you'd say fairly interesting and almost unheard of lamp over here. Although, at least in its time, this was quite common in Europe. This is a switchboard indicator lamp, which is fairly interesting that it uses a medium dual contact bayonet base, which on the continent was much, much rarer than it was on the British Isles, where up until the last 10 or 15 years was almost universal. It was actually quite hard to find in many places medium screw or European medium screw lamps for that time, although with the rise of imported fixtures, especially from parts of the world not necessarily known for the manufacturing quality, they've become, of course, a lot more common there. But getting back to the point of this lamp, it's a Philips 15 watt. That asterisk looking symbol is the Philips factory code identi identifier for Wirt or um, Wirt. Um, my Dutch is uh, not good. Uh, that's in the uh, Netherlands. Uh, 4B, which is February 1994. 110 volts, and the Holland, even though it's the Netherlands, not Holland. Um, and actually, there's two Hollands, uh, North Holland and South Holland, both of which are on the North Sea coast, whereas uh, Veert is in Limburg, which is the province which part of it actually sticks down in between Belgium and Germany. And uh, Veert isn't in that part of Limburg, but it's fairly close. And uh, overall, quite a decent quality lamp with a fairly interesting feature, actually. You can see it's got, in the uh, part of the envelope where the basing cement is, you can see it actually has a pair of bits that stick in to help grip the basing cement, which is very good both for preventing the envelope from separating from the base, both when the lamp is being inserted or removed from service, and in the event of lamp failure, the arcing that can happen in the base can actually blow the envelope out of the base in lower quality lamps, and that helps to prevent it. And you can see there's also two bits that don't have ridges. That's to provide torsional reinforcement. So again, the shearing action of, or the torsional shearing action of the lamp being inserted or pulled from service doesn't cause base failure. However, you see that there's a second substance in there which is more of an orange color. That is a special foam that actually serves to prevent arcing in the lamp base from when the fuse wire is blowing. You can see that it's actually got two fuse wires because both of the lead-in wires thin way down, which ordinarily is something you wouldn't typically see, especially in a 110-volt lamp. However, that's because there's a certain idiosyncrasy of these lamps in that they are commonly employed... I mean, not universally, but they're often used on 110 volts DC, and DC for a given potential arcing can be much worse than it is with AC because you don't have the advantages of the two zero crossings every cycle to uh, cut the arcing current. And even though this is a vacuum internal atmosphere lamp, what can happen is when the filament breaks, uh, you can still get enough of an electron emission from the broken ends of the filament right at the moment of failure that it gasifies enough of the filament that an arc can be sustained. It's not anywhere near as common as that kind of a failure mode happening in lamps with a uh, fill gas, but it can still happen. And because of where this lamp would be employed in a switchboard, especially in something like a power station, you wouldn't want some kind of a catastrophic failure inside one of your idiot light panels, because that would be bad. Yeah, overall a fairly decent quality lamp, and uh, quite interesting as a collector specimen.